we've got another section now and we're going to jump back into the body here so a little bit so the fascia superficial fa fascia right so i want you to imagine so if your body's like an orange your skin is the peel and then we're going inside right so the the outer peel is your skin your muscles are the fleshy orange fruit and it's the white membrane you know the white bit inside Th that is the fascia right so we've got the superficial fascia it's highly elastic and this is just underneath the skin highly elastic fibrous tissue that's well organized it's under the skin separating the skin from the muscles it allows them to slide on each other and it can dis display properties this is interesting again with what um, Helen just said properties of being solid and liquid it's involved in circulation, heat regulation, lymphatic flow around the body. We've got physical therapists here. I'm going to ask you to maybe, um, we'll chip in on this in the group when I, we'll go through this, okay? Um, so I'm interested what the physical therapists feel. So just hold that in mind when we can share that with the group because you're feeling this stuff in the fascia. Now, the deep fascia is often referred to as the silver skin by hunters. I have an awful flashback of being in a butcher's in somewhere in the Northeast as a child, having to be dragged in butchers and seeing rabbits being turned inside out. It's disgusting really. But I remember this silver skin. So that's what it's called by hunters, yeah? It's, it's a very fibrous layer, often in flat sheets, and it has tissue pockets covering the muscles, nerves, organs and glands. It doesn't contain any fat. If somebody eats a lot of meat or chops up meat, you may have some visuals coming to you here about types of meat. Somebody shared something about a type of meat last time. Um, but what's very interesting in this deep fascia, remember it's continuous, tip of the head to the toes. There's 640 discrete pockets surrounding each muscle to keep them separate. So they're not flapping on each other. Okay, then there's something called the meningeal fascia. So this surrounds the nervous system, this type of fascia, vagus nerve. Remember, everything's connected on the Wi-Fi, so we know what's going on. And the brain connects the brain, vagus nerve. And the winner for us here is the autonomic nervous system, right? So think, we're being hyper aroused, fight, flight, freeze, freeze, think of freeze. The body freezing, parts of people, think of your clients, parts of their body remain few, frozen often with trauma. Often they've been frozen for a very long time, completely disconnected, yeah? Then we've got something called visceral fascia. The visceral fascia surrounds the heart, lungs, and the ab abdominal organs, right? So this is suspending the organs to the wall of the body, allowing them to move, and expand, yeah? So the body is a mirror of the psyche, just like that beautiful quote that Lucy put up, yeah? It's interesting, you know, just think about your clients. That picture is quite powerful for me of that, that young person there. Um, and then we move to, you know, the vagus nerve and what and the, and the power of the vagus nerve. But the fascia is, the, is housing 25 million nerve endings in you right now. Right now, that's lots, isn't it? So the fascia is the largest sensory organ in the body. Wow. Profoundly intertwined with the nervous system and vagus nerve. Plays a vital role in the function of the immune system. Wow. Again, stimulated by pressure and vibration. The, this is amazing, this. The amount of sensory information being relayed across the whole network of fascia is greater than that of vision. Wow. Fascia is the body's largest sensory organ. Okay. I'm going to just share this lovely quote here. So fascia is a whole body endocrine organ transmitting hormones. The hormones adrenaline, estrogen, insulin, thyroid. Think of everything that people are showing up with, the clients. Oxytocin, neurotransmitters, serotonin, think of the impact of the antidepressants, heavier drugs, 
on clients, the medication, yeah, dopamine and GABA acid. So we're going to just, if I can ask you just to start thinking about some clients here and who may be coming to mind for you. Um, so our interest here, and again, it's why it freezes up by what happens to the body with the sympathetic nervous system. So when our clients are hyper aroused, hyper aroused, yeah, this is where the body becomes, and you'll know your own clients, the people that you're working with, their body becomes immobile. They may collapse, feel stuck. These are their words. Clients aren't on workshops learning these words. They're coming in and telling you, I feel numb, frozen. I feel like there's part deadness in my body, yeah? The fascia clamps down and restricts what it contains. Also think about that it hardens overnight. Just notice your shoulders, do they feel a bit looser from this morning? They harden overnight when we sleep and in cold weather. It's called fuzz. It's called fuzz. And I'm going to show you about this once we've had a little break out. And over time, this fuzz layers up imagine if you haven't had a stretch in two days a week a month if you're in hospital if people are in hospital and can't work walk can't move over time it's associated with chronic pain the invisible stuff the doctors don't know what to pin on and the bloods come up clear fibromyalgia me chronic fatigue inflammation system okay. let's get to the guts of this right think about our work with mental health and the guts, the second brain, right? The digestive system is the largest area of fascia in the body. <gasps> wow, right? Emotional immobility can create constriction, constriction in the guts and bowels. Think about the IBS, the clients with the IBS. Put other things in the chat there, but the colitis, what's the other one called? Colitis, the one with a C, there's another one, isn't there? With a C. Um, the good Crohn's. brain. Crohn's. Crohn's disease. Spot on. Crohn's. Yeah. The gut brain axis, the second brain, it's known as the, the tummy. To get the clients to get curious about this, right? This is where it shows up. IBS, goals. Oh, I put Crohn's there. Yeah. Celiac, another C, right? Ulcers, many autoimmune. Think of the guts, the digestive system, hungry, not hungry, anxiety with the cortisol. Yeah, please put stuff that's coming to you in the chat because we're all interested here, right? So the gut contains over 1 million, 1 million nerve cells Ooh. encased in fascia, constantly informing the vagus nerve, vagus nerve to brain, the Wi-Fi is on, yeah? So I'm going to just, let's look at the kidneys here. So the Titus Little, who, if you're interested in yoga and a bit of stuff like this, Titus Little, he's an American teacher, he's really cool guy his workshops are really good saying that the kidneys are the battery pack of our bodies when we're dehydrated they tighten up yeah think about our clients trauma clients when clients aren't well they don't know if they're hungry or thirsty not just children when a child doesn't know if they're thirsty. I'm so glad the kids have water bottles now i think that's massive the kids noticing that but often people struggle to notice if they're thirsty hungry, need to go for a wee, need to go to the toilet, yeah? So in the freeze response, we are disconnected and we lose contact with our body and our agency is gone. So I'll give you a quick case study here that during the pandemic, I worked, I, was, I had the great pleasure of working with a, a young woman, Savannah, who had a history of trauma and having not healthy relationships. Her GP diagnosed her, uh, she's 24, had diagnosed her with ME and chronic fatigue syndrome. She was always at the doctor's. There's a bit of getting attention there as well and getting looked after because she didn't have that from her mother. Lots of physical pain and the GP, the scans, everything, they said um, her kidneys weren't working, the liver wasn't working, the gallbladder. They actually wanted to remove our gallbladder and do surgery to remove our gallbladder, right? Gradually, thank God, um, in the therapy sessions, she began to notice when there was external stress, emotional stress, and that that's when the pain started. That's when the discomfort started. And look, and those toxic environments that she was in were manifesting in her body. So it led to her making healthier choices. And when she moved away, I knew she had choice to move away. Nothing's perfect, right? Um, nerve and fascia. 
So the wandering nerve, in Latin it's known um, as the wandering nerve. And the, it's crucial for communicating changes in the fascia to your brain and regulating the nervous system. Have you got that picture, Sarah? Will you put it up? You got yeah. that picture, picture? Yeah, no, I'm trying to take notes and listen to you at the same time. So. <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm sending you the slides anyway. So it wanders from the brain stem through the neck, thorax, organs to the abdomen. It's the chief neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic nervous system. And 80% of the vagus nerve fibers connect body to brain, right? It is encased in fascia, sending messages to reduce heart rate, anti-inflammatory chemicals. I'm just thinking about what Claire said there about the dissolving the cortisol into the bloodstream. Obviously the vagus nerve will control, if we're stressed, we go to fight or flight and the sympathetic nervous system feeds, speeds up, but there's a healthy way of managing it because when it slows down, it can provide a vagal, vagal break to slow us down. So the, everyone's excited about the vagus nerve. I think it's sort of maybe dropping off on popularity a bit now, but it's encased in fascia. Remember, it's down to the stomach, the, the, the major organs, constantly communicating. And the brain, right? So the brain and fascia. So the brain is encased in this meningeal membrane, but until recently, really recently, it, the people just thought it was cushioning for the brain, a bit of padding. But neuroscience have now discovered that the fascia contributes to the blood-brain barrier, communicating via the vagus nerve with the central nervous system. So again, we're all connected. So allowing the brain to monitor data, receive information from all of the organs, but in particular, the brain. And I just want to... I have a lot more on this. I'm just giving you like little pipette bits on, on the top here. But the organs, it's obviously all of the organs. But I'm particularly interested in the heart and I'm going to give you an example. So all our organs within the, the main body cavity, right? From the base of the skull to the pelvis, they're double bagged. You know what a shop? I don't know if you've got a co-op near you. I don't know if you have a co-op in South Africa, but they've got these stupid thin bags. So you've got to have a double, you know, when you double bag things. So our organs are double bagged to keep everything sliding, lubricated in movement. So tone of fascia is important. Tone of fascia. Um, so that organs don't become restricted, fall out, or things clamp down. That word, that's quite powerful, the clamping down. So our heart. Our hearts are encased in fascia, yeah? Gunnar spoke quotes and he says that the heart is a fascia organ. Where I see this is when emotional stress and trauma tightens, hardens, clamping down on the heart. This leads to messages that misfire, incorrect data. Remember the matrix? It's like data. I'm like a data tech person, right? The data is not right. And it's telling us when we're maybe not safe, when we are safe. Trauma, right? Trauma. Not going straight up to a hyper-aroused state. So I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this and have clients who do this. But in particular, I have one client who, during the pandemic, was at a &E. She thought she was having a heart attack. And if you know anyone who works in a &E, they'll tell you that these people show up. Yeah, Rebecca, you're nodding. Do you know about this? Do you want to? All right. <laughs> the, I just thought you might have worked with known someone in no, a &E. I, I remember watching, um, I think it was a 24 hours in A&E programme. I don't know if anybody else has ever seen it. Yes. And there was Look. a case of that on there, a young man. The anxiety, with the anxiety. Yeah. And he yeah. thought he was having a heart attack. Yeah. And absolutely. So when the, I do have this a lot with clients, but this client in particular, um, Nisha, she was showing up at the A&E sometimes in an ambulance, sometimes just getting a husband to take her there. And yeah, and it was anxiety because the fascia was clamping down. 